Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 167, dated January 28th, 2021. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled Jonathan Jasper Wright, the first African American appellate court judge in the U.S. When we think of famous African Americans, you know the common names come to mind, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, you know, Ralph Bunch, and a whole litany of others. But Jonathan Jasper Wright is not typically one you think of, and there's a reason for that. For more than a century after his death, the establishment did almost everything they could to bury the legacy and reputation of this most honorable man. All right? What a surprise, huh? And thus, those wanting to learn about Justice Wright would have had to have done their own independent research to learn about his life and legacy. And that's essentially what brings us here today to learn more about the life and career of Jonathan Jasper Wright. Okay, so let's dive in. Jonathan Jasper Wright was born in February of 1840, a free man in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Growing up, like most children did in his era, he both worked and attended school. Once he reached the appropriate age and having saved up enough money, he enrolled in Lancastrian College in Ithaca, New York to complete his uh, undergraduate style education. Once he had completed those studies, he then returned to Pennsylvania and enrolled in Avery uh, College where he received an honorary Doctor of Laws degree, okay, a very significant accomplishment for anyone at the time, uh, most especially an African American, all right? Now, upon completing uh, his Doctor of Laws degree, he then read law for two years with a local attorney and then uh, spent one year reading law with a local judge, okay? This was how you completed your legal training uh, in this era. If you attended uh, any uh, colleges focused on law, that was one part of it, okay? And then you typically uh, read law with a local attorney or judge to complete the process. Sometimes all you did was read with a local attorney or judge to complete your legal education, and then you uh, were administered a bar exam, all right? So after uh, Wright finished uh, reading law with the local attorney and a local judge in Pennsylvania, he then applied uh, to be examined for the Pennsylvania State Bar Examination. Due to his race, however, he was denied uh, an examination for the bar. Defeated, but not out of the game, uh, Wright went to South Carolina in April of 1865, uh, where he both taught and labored alongside the thousands of new freedmen uh, in the state with the uh, recent end of the American Civil War, okay? With the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which was the very first federal law enacted by Congress to give African Americans any form of legal parity with whites, uh, Wright returned to Pennsylvania and demanded that he be uh, examined for the state bar. As such, he was examined and passed. With that being said, uh, Justice, Mr. Uh, Wright, rather, at this point, not yet Justice, uh, he became the very first African American to be admitted to the Pennsylvania State Bar in August of 1865. Okay? Not long thereafter, he was appointed by General Otis Howard to be legal advisor to the freedmen in South Carolina, all right? For the record, General Otis Howard, okay, is the individual uh, for whom Howard University is named. If you didn't know that, now you do, all right? And that's, of course, Howard University in D.C., the most preeminent HBCU in the country, all right? So, Having served as a legal advisor to the freedmen, uh, Jonathan Jasper Wright would, uh, a few years later, be uh, selected to participate in the South Carolina Constitutional Convention of 1868, which, of course, was designed for the purposes of writing a new state constitution. He would eventually become the convention's vice president and thus played a commanding role in the writing of a new constitution for South Carolina. Wright did his 
best to do away with the rigid inequalities in the old document and focused on the themes of liberty and equal protection of the laws in the new state constitution. The judiciary article of that constitution was essentially his own, and it was so well written that it was carried over into the subsequent state constitution that was adopted in 1895. For the record, the South Carolina Constitution of 1895 is the one which is still in use to this very day in the state. After the Constitutional Convention, Wright was elected to serve as a state senator from Beaufort County, South Carolina, a role that he held for two years. In 1870, a vacancy opened up on the Supreme Court of South Carolina. Wright sought the position along with another uh, individual. Uh, overwhelming support, however, was for Wright, and as such, he was elected to the spot, becoming the very first African American in American history to serve as an appellate judge, as a member of the South Carolina Supreme Court. So we've got Wright's, you know, three landmarks right here. So far, he's the first African American licensed to practice law in Pennsylvania, the first African American to practice law in South Carolina, and now he's the first African American to serve as an appellate judge as a member of the Supreme Court of South Carolina. All right? Excellent. Now, Wright served on the Supreme Court of South Carolina for seven years, and during that time, he authored some 87 opinions, all of which were recognized for their command of the common law and outstanding legal clarity. With the end of Reconstruction in 1877 and the return of the Democratic Party to power throughout the South, Wright wisely knew that his days were probably numbered uh, as a justice on that court. And indeed, not long after the Democrats uh, won back control of South Carolina under the authority of Governor uh, Wade Hampton, some entirely fabricated charges were initiated against Wright, you know, uh, alleging some sort of, you know, misconduct or ethical violations. In any, whatever it was, it was absolute nonsense that was totally untrue. Like I said, Wright knew the writing, he saw the writing on the wall, and as such, he submitted his resignation to Governor Hampton and left the Supreme Court of South Carolina after seven years of distinguished service. After he left the Supreme Court, he relocated to Charleston, where he resumed the practice of law as well as teaching. Okay, And these were his vocations until his death in February of 1885 due to tuberculosis. Justice Wright was 45 years old. For more than a century, okay, uh, after his death, his legacy, like I mentioned earlier, was very shunned and scorned. Indeed, like many African American office holders during Reconstruction, you know, he was, uh, you know, demeaned and, you know, you know, denigrated very badly as uh, one of the uh, effects of Negro rule over whites in the South during Reconstruction, you know, and this is it's a terrible way to describe, you know, a man who committed virtually all of his life to the advancement of, of his people, all right, of African Americans, all right? It would not be essentially until 1997, all right, on an effort by the Supreme Court of South Carolina where uh, his legacy was restored. They found a 100, uh, excuse me, an old portrait of Justice Wright from 1870 and hung it in the Supreme Court building, you know. Uh, and the Supreme Court itself, you know, honored Justice Wright uh, in describing his career, you know, as one committed to justice, equality, uh, and the advancement of African Americans, okay, a very notable man, you know, who committed his life you know, to advancing his people, to teaching, to practicing law, to the advancement of justice, all right? The man did a lot, and his legacy is quite secure, all right? It is also uh, a marker in South Carolina uh, indicating uh, where, you know, he uh, practiced law, okay? And unless that's changed, there may be additional uh, 
you know, uh, structures to honor justice right now, but uh, as last research, these are what exist to honor the legacy of this very great justice. Okay, so again, we have Jonathan Jasper Wright, the uh, very first African American to serve as an appellate court judge in the history of the United States, who also became the very first African American to be licensed to practice law in Pennsylvania and the very first African American to practice law in the state of South Carolina. Okay, so uh, any questions or controversies, feel free to leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, if you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so now. Just hit that little red subscribe button and we'll be in business. I appreciate you for listening to this video. You have no idea. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next bite. Peace.